It goes without saying, but Pokemon Legends Arceus is one of the most bold and unique Pokemon games ever made. After 25 years of games that followed nearly the exact same beloved formula to a fault, this game severs almost all of those familiar ties. The only question remains, did it work out? Good morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR, and welcome to my first post-Legends Arceus video. After logging more than 30 hours and only 3 days in my hold devoid of sunlight and proper nutrition, I have finally completed most of what Legends Arceus has to offer. And boy, I don't even know where to really begin! And not only is the entire genre of the game different, but so is the battle system, so is the way you learn moves, so is the way you catch certain Pokémon. It's frankly far different than I thought it was going to be even after seeing all the trailers and I'll just say this game was a blast for me my expectations were in the basement after sword and shield and brilliant diamond shining pearl if you watch my review on the Sinnoh remakes you know that I was very disappointed in many ways so I thought this would end up being a relatively safe approach to this whole open world Pokemon concept that we've been dreaming of forever and that it would ultimately just be a very bare-bones beta of what we could expect in Gen 9, but honestly, I was wrong. This game has a lot of depth and a lot of fun things to offer, some of which I can't talk about just yet. I want to make this video as spoiler-free as possible, not just for you guys who may not have finished the game yet, but also for my editor. I'm not sure how far he is in the game yet, and I don't want to be a jerk and spoil my own editor. Who does that? So the question kept arising in my mind while I was playing, and that was, is this the best modern Pokemon game? And by modern, I mean since the jump to 3D with X and Y. Now, of course, best is not exactly a term that you can easily define for everyone. Of course, everybody has their own unique tastes. Some people I've seen don't like this game because they find the lack of battles and the Pokedex feeling to be rather boring. Plus, it's not the fully open Breath of the Wild experience that they were expecting, which, in fairness, the first couple trailers did portray the game in that way. So I will say, that for me personally, best just means most fun. And I should also clarify, best does not equal most polished. Like, Pokemon X and Y are way more polished than this game is, but if you know anything about me, I don't care. I think X and Y is really boring and I don't like it. First of all, yes, this game looks horrible. I will not hold back on that front. I've seen some people be like, come on, it's not that bad. Uh, but no, it, it really is that bad. Game Freak needs some serious help, y'all. They either need to sit down and watch a 30 tips and tricks for game development YouTube video, or they just need to ditch whatever engine they're developing on, because every other major Nintendo studio has figured out how to optimize the Switch to make their games look good and run good at the same time. At this point, it's a little embarrassing just just how bad the game looks. Like sure, it's partially on the Nintendo Switch as well for being so underpowered, but Game Freak still lags noticeably far behind a lot of the other studios. In my personal opinion though, graphics are all the way at the bottom of my hierarchy of needs. Like, if the graphics are bad, but the gameplay is good, I'll live. I'm not gonna dwell on that point for like 10 minutes. It's also a decently glitchy game, but glitchy in a fun type of way. I personally haven't encountered anything particularly game-breaking in my 30 hours, just very minor stuff. The closest I got was cheesing my way into Giratina's Lake when I only had Weird Ear and I thought I softlocked myself because I couldn't climb out from the inside. Side, uh, but I was just able to fast travel out. If anything, I was proud that I was able to cheese my way up those cliffs with some skillful weird ear manipulation. I did it again at another point that I ended up getting a Growlithe that was like 25 levels higher than the rest of my team, so I actually enjoy how you're rewarded with exploring places that don't seem possible to explore. Mario Odyssey was a lot like that when it came to rewarding particularly skillful players. I was worried that this game would have that stupid mechanic from the other Gen 8 games where if a wild Pokemon is higher leveled than you, then it's just insanely hard to catch. And maybe they're a little harder to catch in this game, I can't really tell, but it's definitely possible to catch over-leveled Pokemon relatively easily. I bet some people probably expected me to not like that because it makes the game a little easy, but honestly, it's an exploration-focused game, there's not a ton of battles anyway, so I don't really mind if the game is easy because you catch over-leveled Pokemon. The challenge and enjoyment comes more from the dangers of the overworld or trying to get to remote locations. Also, I'm pretty sure they changed the way that damage is 
is calculated in this game, it's a little weird. It makes levels feel less important. Like for some reason, low level Pokemon are just able to throw hands with high level Pokemon way easier than before. So like even if you go out and catch really over level Pokemon, there's still a good chance that you could lose in the right circumstances. And if you're under leveled, then you still stand the chance against tough opponents. There's not nearly as much emphasis on grinding. So whatever they did, I like it. That being said, the game isn't perfect. It does have a few shortcomings outside of the graphics and minor glitches. First of all, the beginning is really slow, like almost sun and moon level slow, where the first hour just feels like one elongated tutorial. Like there's essentially two catching tutorials in this game. First you have to catch the starters, and then you have to catch actual wild Pokemon. Like take your hand off the wheel, I'll figure it out. Eventually, I'm not the sharpest crayon in the tool shed, but rest assured, I will figure it out. The actual exploring in the beginning of the game kind of sucks too. Like, wow, ride Pokemon, carry this game so hard. Because your character has the physical capabilities of an amputated pig. You can't walk up small inclines without getting caught or slowing down. You can swim like three inches before drowning. You can't jump. You can only sprint for like a few seconds at a time. I'll be real, that first couple hours was really rough. But thankfully, the exploration gets more and more fun every time you unlock a ride Pokemon. I do wish certain ride Pokemon were available much earlier, like the climbing Pokemon. I can't say who it is because spoilers. And maybe Basculegion as well. I don't mind that Braviary is so late in the game because realistically, there's almost nothing to do in the sky. You want to be on the ground the majority of the time. But I wish it didn't take so long to get certain rides just because of how much more fun the game is with them being there. I I think because of the slow starts and also the reliance on Pokedex quests to progress the story, this game may have lower replay value than most Pokemon games. And maybe not for everybody, maybe some of y'all like catching Pokemon that much, but I don't. I just kind of catch the ones I want and move on with my day. I am catching them all this time because it is my first playthrough, but I know that I'm not gonna want to do that again in the future. Like, Let's Go Pikachu is legitimately the only Pokemon game that I've never replayed because I just hate how catching tons of Pokemon is a requirement. I'm not about that life, but for one playthrough, it's fine. It's just the beginning and the graphics that I think fall a little short, which honestly aren't the biggest deals in the world. The story is also a little underwhelming. If you watched my last Hopes for Legends Arceus video, I almost had like a mental checklist when I was playing this game. I was like, wow, they included that thing I wanted, and that thing, and that one too, and I think this game actually filled all of my hopes, except for the story part. It's not so much that it's bad, it's just oddly paced. It was almost like Sword and Shield where I waited like 20 hours and I'm like, okay, I'm at the end. Where's the story at? Like, I kid you not, there's this little girl in the beginning of the game who just casually says, hey, I think the world is gonna end soon, and then you go about your business for 20 hours, and then boom, Armageddon arrives. Granted, maybe the Sword and Shield comparison was a bit much. The story, again, wasn't that bad. It's just all kind of crammed in at the end. But I do think the post game makes up for it. I'm not going to say much though, because spoilers. Again, minor things. Nobody really plays a Pokemon game for the story, if I'm being honest. It's just a little bonus if it's there and it's good. Anyway, I've been complaining for half a video that's supposed to be positive. So let's get back to what this game does right, other than just exploration. First of all, the Mad Lads finally did it. They overhauled the old battle system. Well, not completely overhauled, it's still turn-based, but with a twist. I think the agile versus strong style mechanic is really cool. It makes you evaluate your situation more than in the traditional format. My one complaint with it is that it feels way more annoying to use a slow Pokemon, because even if you use agile style, but your Pokemon has a really low base speed stat, then you probably won't even get anything out of it. Slow Pokemon just don't feel good in this game, even ones with really high base stats. So I think it needs a little bit of tweaking, but by and large, I quite enjoyed it. A lot of the moves were also overhauled to have different effects, which caught me off guard at many points. I tweeted out that I felt like Ash Ketchum and Unova because of all the mechanic changes. It was almost like all of my previous knowledge was working against me at times. 
I do wish we'd gotten to see this system at its fullest potential with held items and abilities. I think they just didn't want the battle system to seem overly complex and have mechanics mix in messy ways. So maybe they're still ironing it out? Either way, I'd be sad if they went back to the same old battle system that we've always had in Gen 9. I think they're on the cusp of something really neat and I hope they stick with it. Take it from me, I have hated every battle gimmick since Gen 6, but I think this one is actually pretty sick. It just needs some small revisions. They also changed the way that your Pokemon learn moves. Now it's like they either get a move through leveling up or the move tutor and it goes into a reserve list that you can switch in and out of at will. It's a really cool quality of life buff. You still have four moves, but you never truly forget a move. Imagine if we had this back in the era of HMs and you could just keep HMs in your sub menu but still have them be active in the field. It feels like a massive missed opportunity now. But at least when competitive comes back in the future, I think this change will be great for people who want to run multiple sets on one Pokemon without forgetting and relearning moves. Speaking of which, I am so glad that this game didn't sacrifice any quality of life features for the sake of being logical. I was worried that we might not get access to our Pokemon in the pasture if we were out on an expedition, but they just have a dude at every base camp who is able to get your Pokemon for you. Also, all of your chests are magically connected to each other, so you never have to worry about losing items. Does it make sense? Not really, but I'm glad it's there. I feel like the game freak of a few years ago would have been like, well, it's not realistic to have this kind of technology in ancient Japan, so you can't have it, sorry. I'm so glad they just said, screw logic, let's just keep things convenient for the player. On the opposite side of the coin though, this game really needs a mini-map. There are so many areas that look similar and are really easy to get turned around in and sometimes I'm just heading in the complete opposite direction of where I want to go. Like, you have a cell phone powered by God himself. Put a mini-map on the screen, it shouldn't be a problem. Which again, just goes back to there's a lot of little things they need to smooth out if they're gonna stick with the style. Regardless of whether Gen 9 is like this or whether Legends ends up becoming its own series later down the road, but I think the core of the game itself is really solid. There's a very surprising amount of depth to the mechanics, the Pokemon and characters are more expressive than they've ever been before, the animations are really good, even if the graphics aren't, the Pokemon don't just rotate 90 degrees like they're on a swivel, they actually move and have a great deal of effort put into them. Them. I didn't talk about the new Pokemon at all to avoid spoilers, but I honestly really liked most of the Hisuian forms. There are a couple that didn't resonate with me or the type changes seemed weird, but for the most part, really cool. I also liked that it wasn't just Gen 1 Pokemon either. They spread the love quite a bit among both fan favorites and Pokemon that genuinely needed an upgrade, like Stantler and a few others that I can't mention. And I know everyone is going to ask, but yes. I love his Huey and Arcanine, he is magnificent, and I only wish that Arceus could bring him back to life somehow. Uh, maybe we'll get another alternate universe where these Pokemon didn't go extinct. That would be nice, but probably unlikely. The music is also great. I love running around in what seems to be an unfamiliar land, but then you hear a turn of forest or Mount Coronet start playing in the background, and you're like, oh yeah, that's where I am now. And the music is really chill, really quiet and airy, sort of like Breath of the Wild, and just kind of adds to the laid back tone of the game. I think they nailed the music more than anything. It's spectacular. Anyway, that's about all that I can say without spoiling anything. I think although the game is flawed, it's incredibly fun. For that alone, I would say it's the best modern Pokemon game, in my opinion, best since Gen 5. Maybe it's the hype talking, maybe in a few weeks I'll reconsider, but these are just my first impressions after all. But don't worry, we're going to talk about this game way more in the coming weeks, plus we're going to have a full review of this game on the new Champion League podcast channel in a few weeks. That includes me, Lumius Trainer Zach, Hybrid Hero, the Pokeraf, and Infamous Trainer. So if you haven't subbed to that channel, please do, it's in the description down below. We're looking forward to having some great podcasts a little farther down the road. But if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.